Uh, did you see? Now you're a you're a gaming guy. Yep. Uh, so you're familiar with Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight, correct? Mm hmm. Boogie was a really big YouTuber five years ago. I mean, oh, five years ago he's pretty big. Yeah, he's got about four million subscribers. So he's still bigger than a lot of them. But apparently he's undergone like terrible financial problems, and he weighs like eight hundred pounds. Well, not eight hundred pounds, but he's really big. He's morbidly obese. Boogie's a biggie, and he has a lot of uh, he has a lot of uh, health problems because of it. He's been divorced. Apparently, he's selling off all his collectibles, so on and so forth. So this guy decided to make a documentary about him. Mm -hmm. It's about it's less than one hour uh, documentary. It's pretty easy to watch. I watched it. It's fucking tragic. And it's one of those tragic documentaries where you're watching, and you know my thoughts on the morbidly obese. You made your problem. I, yeah. I'm, I'm watching it, and I'm going, everything you're telling me is things I should feel bad for you. Like, you are in a dark, miserable, shitty place. Right. But if I ignore my impulse and I look into the situation... You are someone who is the very definition of being held accountable for your actions. Yeah. He made 400 grand on YouTube one year. And then he started living his life as though he was only ever going, going to, to make, make 400, 400 grand, grand on YouTube every year for the rest of his life. Oops. He has completely fucked himself. He got, uh, what, what is it, lap band surgery to lose weight? Yeah, didn't he do it more than once? He blew right through it. I don't even think they'll do it for this guy anymore. So I'm watching this, and the guy takes, like, nothing. He's like, oh, I'm not getting a real job because I'm a YouTuber. It's like, yeah, but you're underwater. You're not paying your bill. That's what we always say. Look, if we don't hit our goals for long enough, like, yeah, obviously I'll have to, you know, go get a real-world job. I'm remarkably close to being like, hey, taxi dispatcher again. Right, shit like that. But he goes, no, absolutely not. I'm a famous YouTuber. He, he said something so internet-y it made me cringe during this documentary. He goes... I, he, he said something like, I have 4 million subscribers. I'm not getting a job. And I'm going, th that's a very internet guy thing to say because 4 million subscribers doesn't make you a dime. No. People have to watch you. They have to be giving, you have to be making money off of those subscribers somehow. Yeah. To... Uh, watch the interview deleted scene on his YouTube channel shows his mentality. So we're going to watch a couple of these. Um, he Oh, this is the clip I had. Thank you, Egg Picker. This is uh, the same exact one. So they hooked Big, uh, Boogie up with a job interview. And he went, or not not a job interview, but like a job recruiter. recruiter like get a, him a to do mock interviews and get him ready. Uh, before we watch that, I just want to show you the kind of the beginning of this documentary, mm -hmm. at, just to show you where he's at. Um, they, it starts, there's a lot of this shit is him in the bathtub. Why? And like washing himself. Uh, I don't know if I should talk about this, Mike, but I'm going to. There was one girl that I dated. She liked a lot of childish things. She liked rubber ducks. That's why I have some of these rubber ducks. And one of my favorite memories with her... Yeah, it's called The Dark Sad Life of Boogie2988. I want to give the channel credit here. It's Mike Klum. It's got about 2 million views. And it, it's doing better every day because it had 1.1 yesterday when I was watching it. So it's doing very well. Uh, Mike Klum is the channel. It's called The Dark Sad Life of Boogie2988. And a, yeah, a lot of this is in the bathtub. And it... You look at him and you just go, why are you complaining at me? Why are you trying to play a victim in all this? You are you someone... made this situation. And you refuse to take accountability for yourself. You refuse to do anything to better your, your station in life. You refuse to do anything that changes, that, that, that fixes any of this. You just full steam ahead with what hasn't been working. You refuse to acknowledge that that donut is what got you here and you keep eating it. He keeps talking about how bad he, how, how bad his money situation is and how he doesn't have enough money to pay his bills and he's selling his magic cards and pinball machines and to, to make ends meet and shit like that because he's making like three grand a month on YouTube. And I could live very well off of three grand a month. There you go. He refuses to change anything, refuses to find other ways to make income, 
But then also he goes to magic every week and plays with Matt. He plays magic. He buys pizza for everybody every week. He's door dashing. He's, you know, doing all of this shit. You're like, so you're making your problem. Yes. He, he's. This documentary does a very good job, in my opinion, of showing this guy as an attempted sympathetic figure, but then reminds you, the documentary reminds you every once in a while, this guy is not someone to have sympathy for. He's done everything to himself. Is us setting in this tub, her playing with rubber ducks as I, I washed her, and then I, when we got out, I took her to bed. One of the best nights of my life, Mike. It happened right That here. sounds fucked up. That is a... Yeah. Oh, in 2019, Boogie had seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in savings. Now, I want to point out something in this documentary because we're not going to play this whole thing. We're going to play a couple minutes worth here. He owes like two hundred some odd grand on his house. That means he blew through three quarters of a million dollars in savings and never once thought to get the mortgage off his back so he maybe wouldn't need so much money every month. So the house would at least be relatively paid for. Right. You just have property taxes and insurance. Which, by any other metric, is very manageable. Couple hundred bucks a month, yeah. He's now facing bankruptcy and foreclosure. Yeah, so when it comes to financial approach... See, I this is why he can't be felt sorry for you're facing foreclosure, you're in debt up to your eyeballs, you don't have any money, and your fat ass is just lying in a bathtub, staring at your phone. Talking about how you really remember the good times with the rubber ducks. Right. Yeah, he, he doesn't want to change. He wants to whine and complain and be a victim that all this stuff is going wrong with him, but he doesn't want to do anything different. I'm here to tell you, I don't think DDP could fix this motherfucker. I don't think he could take Boogie into the accountability crib. If he could, it would be DDP's greatest work. <laughs> forget Jake the Snake Roberts. Forget all the people he's gotten clean. If he could make Boogie not the saddest, most miserable piece of shit who deserves everything bad that's happening to him, that would be DDP's greatest accomplishment. I don't fucking know what I'm doing. Money comes in, money goes out. For the longest time, my ex-wife handled that shit, but then I got divorced. I don't know where my money is. I don't know what it's doing. The only thing I've ever done with it is I threw it in the crypto and then lost a shitload of it. So he threw 750 grand into crypto and lost 600. And he's lying in a fucking bubble bath. And people are like, oh, isn't this sad? Isn't this? No, this is vengeance. This is justice. This is righteous. Sit there and whine and complain. Oh, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. It's been years this has been going on. Figure it out. Oh, I don't know how to do the thing. Well, it, it, you better learn. Uh, otherwise, you know what? Just go ahead and slip beneath that bathtub and let the rest be handled by the Lord. Holy shit. I can't believe that I've been dealing with, like, seriously dark, depressive thoughts the last few weeks. I just needed to watch this. You should. You should watch the Boogie documentary. I'm going to have to when I go home. Because this is well, fucking here's... pathetic. Right. I have legit problems that I have to overcome every day just to go through my normal day like a normal person. You literally are sitting there going, I don't know what to do about my life. I got a fucking idea. Get out of the goddamn tub. You know, maybe he should take Al Pacino's advice. Holy father, holy father. The man says to the... the uh... The Pope, you know what he says? He says to the Pope, Holy Father, Holy Father, help me. I do not know what to do. I, I do not, not believe. believe anymore. You know what the Pope says to him? Fake, fake it. it. Well, I couldn't fake it anymore. Underrated goddamn cocksucking movie. Well, I Underrated. Mean once again, another movie that's really amazing because all it is is an hour and a half of Al Pacino going, oh, look, scenery. I'm going to chew on it for a yeah. while. Oh, you see that bar? <laughs> Shame on you! Do you do your job? No! 27 years, neck deep in shit! You got me. And in a cookie jar. Every line in that movie is just the caricature of what Al Pacino's perceived as. Yep. There's everything. If you want to see, there's 2,000. Look at how wrinkly his thought. He's just been he's just been soaking in that bath. <sighs> Staring at how much money he doesn't have. Instead of getting his ass on YouTube, making good content, 
or going and finding ways to make more money or selling a pinball machine. No, he just want to sit, sit and get all wrinkly fingered in the tub. While he sits there at 600 pounds, not doing I shit really, about himself. I really, really want this person living on the street. $2,758 in my bank account right now. And let's see if mortgage has come out yet. So tomorrow, when they take mortgage out, I'll have about $700 to live off of until the 20th when I get paid again from YouTube. So I'm just going to live off of $700. And I'll probably sell some cards along the way and use that money to make ends meet as well. Okay, good, because you're like 50 years old. You don't need your kitty cards anymore. I don't if, fucking if, feel bad for you. I have to survive off of $700 or less uh, after I get done paying my bills all the fucking time. Right. Now, see, to me, if you're in your 40s or 50s and you don't have children, I don't think he has children. You don't need your magic you're cards. you me he ain't slaying the puss? Uh, no, I don't think so. Well, they get to that, too, and how much of his money he spent on hookers. You're really not going to oh, feel sorry. Oh, you are for... fucking kidding me. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, fuck this guy to the end of the earth. Even if you don't didn't know who Boogie was before, I highly recommend this documentary. This Mike Klum guy did a great job. But if you don't have children, sell all of your fucking magic cards. A, a nerd this big, he's probably sitting on tens, hundreds of Depending, thousands of dollars. Depending, I mean... Some of the cards, I mean, you're talking magic. You've got cards that are taken out of print. You've got cards that are no longer in, involved in the game, and those are highly collectible. You get the foil rare release cards and shit. You can have a lot of money sitting in Magic the Gathering. He says he's been playing for 30 years. If he's holding on to some seriously like rare cards from back in the day and stuff, yeah, he could have. Sell them all. Go to or even do a consignment thing. Take them to a place and they'll give you like 85% of whatever they take in. They'll take 15 and they'll sell them in bulk for you. And you could probably, like you said, you could make 10, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on your magic cards. You see in his room, he's got like a dozen pinball machines. Sell them. You don't need that shit. Right. Although the pinball machine, at least he'll be standing up. Well, like I said, you don't need that. You're not going to play it. <laughs> Card with them that I owe six hundred dollars on, and on top of that, you know how many people are watching this right now? Going, if I had a credit card that only had six hundred dollars on it, I would be Fuck. so happy. <laughs> so one hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars on my house. I think my net worth is zero. Once you pull the equity out of the house, get rid of the, the house debt, sell off all my collectibles, and wait, not, uh, wait a minute, that's not how money works. If you have $105,000 in home equity, then you don't have home debt. When you sell the house, you sell it for $270,000. You pay off your one sixty five. dollars They give you, after fees and license and everything else, the equity that's left over. Right. So you don't get... Home equity is part of your worth. Well, as he already explained... He's an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, hey, we've uh, we've added up, I guess, uh, roughly thirty thousand dollars in collectibles. Okay, so thirty thousand in his. So you got your crypto at thirty. You got your collectibles at thirty. So that's sixty grand. That would buy you a year to figure your shit out. Yeah, but he's Alpha. not gonna. No, he's not going to. My debts, I think that puts me at zero dollars. Shit, I'm worthless. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's fair. I mean, one, look, only one I feel bad for in this situation are the two fucking dogs. They can't leave. Don't worry. They don't have a lot of meat on their bones. I think they're safe. Well. <laughs> yeah, uh, grab the, the bar. The you need the bar, right? No, you grab that bar. That's being ripped right off the wall. Are you out of your fucking mind? Oh, I thought that was there as like an actual. I think that, that's a towel rack. Oh. Yeah, that's coming down, brother. Along with the wall. See, this is what makes me not feel sorry for this guy. You put yourself there. I don't feel bad for this person having trouble getting out of this tub. No. No. Despite a gastric bypass, Boogie continues to struggle with his weight. Look at that. That's like me getting out of the tub. He's attempting to save the $20,000 to remove the excess skin. Sell your fucking collectibles. You could do that and still have 40 grand left. But my best feature, this is the one the ladies love. I call it 
my meat apron. Oh. I have two meat curtains. There's a second one. Oh. I have two glorious. He's just a self-loathing, self-pitying fat man who doesn't want to change. Hey, go look, go watch the whole documentary. It's Are you trying to make me puke? It, kind of a little bit. Oh. It, go watch the whole documentary. It's really well done. The guy does a good job, but it, it, don't feel sorry for this fucking guy. Please. Whatever I don't. you do. Don't feel sorry for I'm him. Grossed out. Uh, Hobo Chili with 499 says every day Aaron stares in the mirror with queso cascading down his fat chin, thinking to himself, is the today the day I'll wash my mouth out with buckshot? That's Hobo, I, I, I'm here to tell you that wasn't very nice, sir. That wasn't very nice. Remarkably accurate, but <laughs> a touch indelicate, but fair. No, I like they do th like, yeah, they show that he spent like, I think he said one hundred fifty thousand dollars on hookers. I think. So, again, your financial problem is entirely you not understanding that you have to, you know, budget. Right. That's that's exactly what it is. And then he spends the whole documentary complaining, almost like this is shit that's being done to him. He's the least sympathetic person. Because I, I caught myself feeling some sympathy for him during the documentary. And I'm like, oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got this fat. You won't help yourself. Then he bitches about his health problems like he didn't do it. I, I mean, it's in They held you down and they face-fucked you with those Doritos over exactly. and over again. Uh, so I want to show you the a little bit of the job interview clip. It's really bad. A little bit about your background and where you think you want to go with the... He doesn't take any of this seriously, by the way. So he's got all these problems, all these money issues. He's morbidly obese. And the way he treats this mock job interview is just, it's like, you know what? You fucking deserve it. Experience that you already have. Well, okay. YouTube was a lot easier for me because I got to set my own hours. I don't know if I yeah, can. Let's, just, let's go right to it. And so you are here today because you are seeking employment. Yeah. You're seeking out new work opportunities. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about your background and where you think you want to go with the experience that you already have. Um, I did work at a small gaming store back in 2006, 2007. Yeah. Around 2000, I washed dishes in a Mexican restaurant, but the owner of that business has been d deported. So all that's so, fine. Uh, right, yeah, shut the fuck up, nobody cares. Let's, let's put this into a short version. You have no actual real world experience. You right. have no actual job experience. And you have no people skill. Like, again, I criticize people who live on Reddit and Discord and 4chan and, and YouTube and shit like that and don't go outside. But, like, this is what you all become. I, I've got news for you. The longer, like, you just become boogie eventually. You can't talk to people without being incredibly autistic and awkward. You don't know what you should or shouldn't say. And people, real people look at you and go, you know, because when you're on the internet, people go, oh, this guy, fuck a ball break or whatever. But people in the real world look at you and they just go, that's sad. You're a fucking pathetic worm. Like, you're really... This not. is not going as well as you think it yeah. is. Yeah. And it's fine to be self-employed. So tell me a little bit about your current self-employment. Like, what is your most current experience? What do you do? So I've been making online video for about 17 years. Um, I was one of the like original YouTubers to really kind of blow up. And I can and tell you, I can tell you this right now: no employer gives a fuck. No employer gives a fuck. But it, in in his end, you really want to talk about like what what do you have job experience? Well, I'm really good at uh, at being an entertainer. I've been entertaining and audience. Like it's how you present it too. Yeah. Like oh, oh well, I I was one of the first YouTubers to really blow up. Yeah. And where are all the other YouTubers who blow up right now? Where are, yeah. where are they? Well, and, and I've got news for you. You know what the real world thinks of that? They think it's a fucking joke. Yeah. Like that that's why we always say like all these podcasters are like we're in podcast wars this and that. Everyone thinks you're a fucking joke in the real world. Everything thinks we're a fucking joke. In right. the real, as they should. We've always said we're in purgatory. We're serving our time until we can get back into legitimate broadcasting cuz this is a joke. Like this is not respectable. Same thing with Boogie here. I was one of the original YouTubers. The real world Boogie thinks that's pathetic. And by the way, it's really hard to 
really embrace you. I was one of the original YouTubers. Yeah, the rest of them all went on and did other shit. How did you fuck it up? Right. Philip DeFranco, I think, is still doing okay. Yeah. Ethan Klein's still doing okay. Shtick has been about, like, pretend, pretending to get angry about video games. I do a character voice like this, you, you sons of bitches, I can't believe you ruined Diablo 3, this is my favorite game, you know. Okay, so you just said everything you do online is fake now? Sir, this is Pfizer. Uh. The kids liked it, and uh, then I got married. Uh, then I got a divorce five years later, and yeah, you I... You don't need to share all of this shit at a job interview. This is like, this comes off as like trauma dumping. People yeah. go, I'm not hiring this guy. He's a fucking mess. Everything is someone else's fault, but he brings all the problems with him. That's just it. You know what? You should watch this documentary because you just nailed it in that statement. He causes all of his own problems and then brings them along with them like he doesn't know where they came from. And it's all because of other people. Yes. He kind of completely and utterly lost my mind. I also got bariatric surgery, so I lost my major coping mechanism, which is food. I, and uh, now I kind of need to transition into, honestly, anything, because I'll likely lose my house in the next six months if I don't. So anything you got. Fine, gainful employment. Are you currently doing any YouTube stuff? Is that still yes, something you're doing still, and you're going to continue to do it? I do mostly commentary. Yeah, I mostly do commentary videos now. I am disabled, uh, recognized by the state of Arkansas, but also the United States government. There's that. <laughs> now, the, the I hate you! I hate you people! I'm disabled! I have a horrible problem! I couldn't put down the fucking... Fork! I am so sick of this shit. Do you know how much I wish that one ounce of this was because I had a control issue? Do you know how much I wish that my fucking legs were all my problem? No. Oh, I'm disabled. Fuck you. Sorry. I'm a Christian. Oh. No. <laughs> oh, I said, what in the world is this? Uh, sorry. He hit a he hit a nerve. <laughs> Holy crap. 225 away. If that isn't enough to knock it out, fire away, boys and girls. I think you're going to that start like... sweating. I think you're going to pop a blood vessel. Uh, no, I already did that. Uh oh, It's in my I'm eye. Extremely impressed. So there's you're some... saying you wish your MS was as controllable as Yeah, not... I wish I had a fraction of fucking control of this. Like, every time people are like, oh, well, have you tried doing this? Have you tried doing Do you know how much shit I have tried, still try, to fucking deal with this crap? And then she's like, oh, well, I'm disabled. Yeah, yeah, you're real disabled. Because, you know, all those times at the buffet were like, hey, uh, extra plate of nachos. And you're like, well, don't mind if I do. That's not disabled. That's you with a control problem. You disabled yourself. Yeah, you disabled yourself. You disabled yourself. Uh, th they don't show it in this clip, but at the end of this, he oh. leaves the documentary guy a, a, vo a text voice message mm -hmm. where he says, yeah, I've decided I'm not getting a real job. I'm a fucking YouTuber with 4 million subscribers. So that's what I do. So he didn't. So he goes and he does this for the documentary, and then again, in true I'm a victim fashion, goes no fuck that. I'm just gonna keep doing what I always do, but I want to keep bitching. It's almost like he wants these things to bitch about so he can, I don't know, feel like something's been done to him rather he's, than he just failed. He's stealing DSP's bit. He's like, oh guys, I really need that money. The bill's coming in. Yeah. You're, it's on you to provide for my lifestyle. Oh, he said he got ten grand for that fight with Wings of Redemption, and right. in the documentary he goes, oh, but I spent it all. On what? He says the training and everything else. I don't know how you spend 10 grand on training. Honestly, I, well, I get paid from the gym that I help at, but I also pay to go to the gym. It's not. Yeah, but you're not. It's, it's, it's a, no the, one's the shelling out 10 grand to get you ready for a fight. But what I'm saying is if I train for six months, that's a hundred, that's 600 bucks of training at that gym. You buy gloves and everything else. That's even if you buy good gloves and you buy all the equipment, everything. That's maybe three hundred bucks, it, and then your hotel maybe fifteen hundred bucks. Your flight a thousand bucks. If you spend more than four or five thousand dollars on everything for that fight, if you don't go home with at least four or five grand in your pocket, you're a lunatic. You've done something well, you know, terribly wrong. The uh, the pre and post fight ladies really. Yeah, well, the you, bill. Know, you need to drain your balls. I get it. Some mental health issues that we bring to the table. 
And then physically, uh, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. And when you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife and I am also a pedophile, uh, but that could This is why you need to have, I don't care how badass you think you are on the internet, you have to have a tether to the real world. You have to have some kind of thing that holds you accountable in the real world so that when all of this goes crash and burn and you don't save a fucking dime and you need to go back out, you can still figure shit out. Number one, if they ask you in that job interview, are you going to keep doing the YouTube shit if you get this job? You go, no, I'm done. That's what I've always said. If I have to get a job, I'm not going to keep doing this. And fucking get in trouble and ruin my gig. Yeah. You out of your mind? Absolutely not. Uh, no. But he's sitting there, and if they asked him, would you keep doing the YouTube thing? He's like, oh, yeah, I have 4 million subscribers. Well, then you're, they're not going to hire you. They, they, if they're like, oh, if we Google you, it'll say all this pedophile shit, and you're not going to stop doing the things that made them say that you're a pedophile and shit on the internet, we're not hiring you. Plus, I, I really... Do you not realize how sad this is? You went into a job interview. I have no references. I have no experience. I have no training. I have no education. Right. What do you have? <laughs> Could you give me some of your skills? Would be an issue uh, for employers that would research me. So if we can find someone who won't Google me, that would be good. Well, uh, that's difficult. I mean, well, you know what Patrick Melton did? He bought a service because he's got so much bad shit about him out on the internet. He bought a service to scrub and continuously scrub. You keep paying these people to scrub everything about you off the internet. Blur your house off Google Maps, delist all your addresses, all of this other shit. So while, he, while guys like him and Boogie, they're about the same size, while they want to like criticize other people, do all this other shit, they hide behind services they've paid because they're chicken shits in real life. Again, this is where you need to touch grass. Otherwise, you lose all perspective. You don't want to be like Boogie or Melton or these other guys. It, it's, a, it's a dark, bad road. Well, for Boogie, I think the touching grass would have at least been good on the yeah. exercise. <laughs> a little bit. The bending and, he, and the stretching. And he makes more money than Patrick does, so there's that. Can't, I can't submit your resume to a client and then request that they don't Google. And then physically, I, I'm easily injured. Like, I injured myself coming here today. I twisted my ankle. <sighs> And then at what point like, is this a sign from God that yeah. maybe you're not meant to be here? But again, he pitches it like it's not his fault. Oh, I, I'm easily injured. Well, you, you yeah, eat too much. You Work have a weight problem. Yeah, it is not great because of the depression and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I mean, I do have some. Again, the word trauma dumping just Sharp. comes to mind. He, this would be like if I went to an interview, like, look, order. man, I, uh, I got a lot of problems and I deal with a lot of shit. And I'll be honest, you know, I'll smile to your face and do a good job. But then when I go home, I often think about how good does that gun taste? So, I mean, there's uh, some days where is he late or is he dead? I mean, that's a game we can play. Did you hear what he just said? He goes, one of my references could be Keemstar. So an internet guy. Someone All that nobody will guys. take seriously. Not only nobody will take seriously, but if you're in the real world, nobody knows who that is. No. You have to be pretty tapped into the internet to know who Keemstar is. This lady doesn't know who that is. A guy who's running a bank doesn't know who Keemstar is. It's they a very They may have seen world. a video, but right. they don't fucking know him. Kid behind a camera. Mm -hmm. You know, kid behind a camera. McJugger Nuggets might. I worked with him. I had owned a McJugger small company with him. He's a big guy okay and I, I see like this lady doesn't know who the fuck these losers are and by Maybe the way I, these references mean nothing because if the people don't know who they are who cares if they vouch for you right great grandpa charles green but he well so you do so have dead. some people that you could reach out to and call upon to give an example of what their experience was working with you yeah i can't say that it would be a a, a, a glowing review but it would be uh, a review should mention I'm also a felon. Okay. Uh, What's the nature of your felony? Aggravated assault. How old is it? About two years. Okay. So He went out his front door at someone who was outside his home, and he fired his gun in the air towards them. Because he's a fucking idiot. This is someone who's not... I'm sorry. I hate to say this, but... And it's not... I hate to give him this benefit. 
Yeah. It's not entirely his fault. Uh oh. Society has built a place. We have too many people. They're too soft to live. Okay. And this is an example. <laughs> this man is too soft to live. It, Some somebody in the chat said that uh, they're like it's not a real interview. Next, no, it's a mock interview. They're doing a mock. We said that at the beginning. They're doing a mock interview, and she's a recruiter. So the idea is this is a practice interview that she's going to get a sense of who she can pair him with. Right, and right now, sh boy, that lady has her work cut out for her. Uh, McLuck says uh, this is getting sad. Yeah, I mean, I we got to cut it off there because I mean, this thing. It, look, it doesn't get better. Jesus. Like it that documentary is it it's a rough one. It it's a rough watch, but it's entertaining for sure. Uh Nebo said this Walmart would hire this guy on the spot. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're you're 100% door greeter material. Yeah. 